I just got these two uh, Meanwell power supplies. They're almost identical. Uh, they're both uh, RSP750. So that's a 24 volt, 30 amp, 750 watt power supply. The only difference between the two is the revision. One's from roughly 2016 and the other one uh, 2019, as far as I can tell. They're both defective, but in slightly different ways. One of them, the red LED turns on, it's a status that should turn green, uh, and the fans run, so that was promising. And on the other one, the status LED barely br blinks red, it's hard to see, and the fans don't run. I first looked at the unit that I thought was almost working, the one with the solid red LED. I looked at the 12 volt, the, the auxiliary 12 volt supply that powers the remote on off and a bunch of other stuff. And I followed a few, a few false leads that I've trimmed out because they weren't really interesting. Uh, but when looking at this control board here, this is just a sideways view and something caught my attention right here. This resistor right there, I was very suspicious. It, it, I could read only the t first two numbers, but luckily having a second power supply, I was able to figure out what it was supposed to be. And it was definitely not only chipped off, but broken. Uh, on these thin film resistors, the black, the black layer is actually the one that does the, the conducting or the resisting. So having that broken off was a pretty clear indication. I have no idea how that thing broke. It's it's fairly protected from the outside, so I don't know how mechanical damage could have caused this. And electrical damage, that's also weird because it's not... I would assume other things to explode before breaking a, a flake off of this, so it's still a mystery. While I was in here, I tried to see what the differences were between the two revisions. This one has what looks like a 2019 date code. And the other one, I just did a quick quick overlay here. This one seems to be 2016. And I went from one to the other like this. And while well, they're different photos with different perspectives, but it's still, everything lines up, even the, the vias, the copper traces, everything seems to be the same. So I'm really not sure what they changed. Uh, maybe some capacitor values. Those are not marked and I didn't measure them. I don't really care either. But other than that, they seemed identical and this one, this one is a good resistor. Well, it's hard to tell, but it is. Oops. Yeah, it's 2.4K. Okay, I just replaced that uh, 2.4K resistor and I got this plugged in again. <laughs> Let's see if it works now. <laughs> well, what do you know? LED's green now. No smoke. And 24 volts. Yeah, okay. Well, that was easy. I'll still do a load test, see if it's good to go before closing it up. I decided to take this one apart to look underneath the PCB because uh, the control interface, this connector down there, uh, I know it's not the same as the schematics I have, so I want to need to trace those signals and figure out what's going on here underneath the stuff. And to remove it, uh, I think it's pretty straightforward. A couple screws on each side holding the heat sinks onto the, the frame, then disconnect the fan, and then I think it just slides out. Yep. Nice. There's a thermal stuff all over the place. Well, what a luxury having two power supplies to troubleshoot. Even though they're both uh, defective, this section here is the secondary the secondary high current low voltage part. And there's a bunch of diodes here. One of them is one of them produces the the 12 volt for the fans and the other one is a 12 volt for the remote on off. On the uh, other side here, this is a primary side, this diode feeds uh, one of the ICs, I don't think it's, it's either, no I think it's the one, yeah, on this small PFC PCB that's 
one of those, it's uh, the last bin on, on the right, I don't know if that's one or seven, uh, but you can probe it from the other side. So, so far what I have is uh, that that chipped resistor on the first power supply and on the other power supply which looked deader well there's uh, one shorted diode on the primary side which feeds the PFC circuit so uh, with the PFC not working that's kind of normal to have nothing nothing much going on I think. Uh, interesting this is the power supply that's that it's deader than the, f the first one I was looking at. I removed that uh, diode here on the primary side and out of circuit it tests fine. And if I probe where it was, this is a reading is sort of a cir short circuit so I wonder if it may be the capacitor that's shorted out. So I'm going to remove that next and take a look at it out of circuit. Finally! Uh, Took a lot of tests to find the find the sh the. It wasn't a short. That's the thing. I was measuring about 80, 80 ohms, eighty five ohms, uh, between those uh, between that VCC net and the ground. And since when I was testing the diode, because of the transformer, it was reading reading as as if the diode was a problem. But once I removed that, I began probing around. I removed uh, one electrolytic capacitor here. It wasn't the problem. Uh, then I tried the resistor right next to it. That uh, wasn't the problem. Then I traced a bit of the net with this with the schematic. I ended up on this on this uh, PFC board. I was able to just desolder one pin, so I wasn't uh, I didn't have to remove the entire board. It was just enough to disconnect it from the rest, and the the short was still there. And finally, I went around this area. This drives the relay. Uh, after a certain delay, and I removed a ceramic capacitor right here, and 85 ohms. Interesting. If I flip it around like that, it's a different number. 78 this time. If I flip it again, I was reading 100 something earlier. Just to clarify what I'm working on right here, uh, so this is uh, just the first page of the schematics. It's, it's, there's a lot of stuff going on. But for the moment, I'm looking at this section here. Uh, this is a transformer right there with a bunch of windings. On the secondary side, there's a 12 volt here. That's for the fan, I believe. Uh, this is for the RSP1000. It's not quite the same. So this section here, for example, this one should have a 5 volt regulator, but mine does not have this. It's slightly different and it produces a different plus 12 yeah that's a one <laughs> a different 12 volt rail and on the primary side right here the diode I initially suspected was this one here but it turned out to be good out of circuit then I removed this electrolytic and it turned out to be good and I was still measuring with this removed, so with this disconnected, I'm still measuring between this point and this point, about 70 to 80 ohms. So I, the VCC net I'm looking at is this one here. And pin 7, I believe that's the PFC controller. So I was able to open this junction too. VCC is also found at the other end up here. I'm not sure what this does. It doesn't really matter. And I eventually found the short circuit on this capacitor. On my board, it's not a... Uh, this, this one's polarized. Mine's just a uh, ceramic cap like this. Alright, well, it's not really repaired. It's just a patch to do a, a couple tests. I didn't have a surface mount capacitor, so I just threw what I had there. Um, the resistor here, it's a 1.5K. I broke it when I removed it, I just noticed. So I put two smaller ones in series. That's more parts I'll have to order. All right, let's see if it blows up. Okay, that's well, better. I got a solid red light now. Uh, let's see if it turns on with the. If I short the two. 
two pins on the end, 13 and 14. Oh yeah. It was green for a sec. Yeah, this might work better. I got the shorting plug installed now. Aha, much better. And do I get 24 volts? Yes, I do. Okay, I think this one's fixed. All the fans are not going, are not running because they're disconnected, but I think otherwise it works fine. Murphy almost got me. I was on the last screw and I remembered that I forgot to plug in the fan. Classic. Huh. 